I have wrote over 100,000 lines of Python code. This number crept up over years across products, APIs, and scripts. Some were clean, while others were kind of duct taped together at 2 a.m. But across all the code, patterns started to emerge. Some things broke again and again, and some things scaled really well. Here are the biggest lessons I've learned and my quick go-to Python practices for writing maintainable and scalable Python code. Tip number one is when reuse becomes a trap. Now you've probably heard it a hundred times. Don't repeat yourself, which is known as the dry principle. And yes, in theory, it's solid advice. But after tens of thousands of lines of Python, I've learned this the hard way. Premature abstraction can be more damaging than duplication. Here's why abstractions are promises. They imply structure and intention. When you create an abstraction too early, before the patterns are clear, you're locking yourself into an assumption that often do not hold. Instead, favor this mindset. Let duplication live a little. It's often the best way to spot the right abstraction later on. Wait for patterns to repeat more than three times before abstracting. And then you can ask if the abstraction reduces or increases your cognitive load. The goal isn't fewer lines of code, it's clear intent. Abstraction should feel obvious in hindsight, not forced in the moment. Now, tip number two is make the future you thank yourself. One of the most humbling lessons I've learned after writing 100,000 lines of Python isn't about syntax or speed, it's about just overall clarity. Because here's the thing, code is read far more than it's written. When I'm deep in the zone, for some reason I start using one-liners or slick tricks that feel satisfying in the moment, but fast forward six months and that brilliant logic becomes hard to solve. Readability is what you want to focus on. It's what lets my team move quickly and it's what separates professional engineers from juniors or hobbyists. So what does that actually look like in practice? Well, one, you can name variables like you're naming functions in a manual. Two, you can write comments when the why isn't obvious from the what. And three, you can favor explicit logic. Four, organize your code like professional, even if the project is small. And I'll leave a link below that is a guide to how you can set up a clean architecture fast API project. This is how I try and thank my future self for sticking with whatever my today's project is. Now, tip number three is the power of boring code. Early on, I used to chase elegance. The shorter the function, the fancier the pattern, the better I just felt overall. This made me feel like a pro. But after years of scaling Python projects, one truth keeps coming back. And it's a pretty, you know, it's a, it's a truth that makes a lot of sense. It's that simple code always wins. Why? Because complexity compounds. Clever solutions might impress on day one, but they tend to break and slow everyone down in the future. Now, here's what I'm talking about, and here's what it looks like in practice when you want to start favoring flat over nested logic. Use fewer custom utilities, or be okay with a little repetition if it makes the flow clear. The best Python I've written isn't the most clever, it's just the stuff that runs and no one has any questions about it. Boring code is simply underrated. Now tip four is the safety net I didn't know I needed. I can get away without writing tests for a while. Things will seem fine. I'll move fast, you know, until one day a refactor breaks the payment logic or <laughs> deletes user data. That's when it sucks not having tests. If a function interacts with something critical, like a database, authentication, billing, user sessions, it deserves a test. You don't need 100% coverage. You need strategic coverage. The kind that buys you confidence, not just chasing after like a number like 100. Tests can absolutely be a pain to implement in the beginning, especially if you're not used to adding tests in your application. That's why a lot of people skip it. There are three different tests that you're going to want to integrate into your application, and they're kind of the three main tests that every professional application has. One is unit tests, which test individual functions or methods in isolation. So like, does the calculate total function return the right value? Then there's the integration tests, which test how multiple parts of your system work together. Like, does your API plus database return the right thing? And then lastly, there's end-to-end -end testing, which is also known as like E2E. This kind of test tests the entire flow of the entire application. Testing isn't just about preventing bugs either. It's about making sure your application runs successfully when no one is there to fix it. Now, tip number five is that type hints are underrated. 
For a long time, I know I ignored type hints, and I'm sure a lot of people have too. Python was dynamic, wasn't that the whole point of using Python? Typing felt optional, maybe even unnecessary. But after tens of thousands of lines of code and dozens of bugs traced back to, you know, a wrong assumption I made, I have changed my mind. Type hints don't slow me down, they save me from myself. When I started working with APIs that return like deeply nested JSON or functions that evolve from two to 10 parameters, I began to appreciate the power of static analysis. Libraries like MyPy catch mistakes you didn't even know you were making in the first place, like returning a none when you promised a list or passing a string where a date time was expected. And the best part, Python still feels like Python at the end of the day. Type hints simply just add clarity. They act like live documentation in your code and they make your refactoring safer, especially at scale. So if you're avoiding typing because it feels heavy, I'd encourage you to give it another shot. Typing is one of the few tools that improve both the developer experience and the code quality without adding like literally any real friction. So writing 100,000 lines of Python just kind of humbled me over the years. I've kind of changed my views on some things. I see how my old code broke and scales or even survives. I learned that readability, testability, and structure matters far more than trendy libraries and patterns. And most of all, with when working with a team, I've learned to build with empathy for my teammates, my future self, and the users who are actually using the software. So if I had any final advice, keep it simple, keep it clean, and keep building.